Welcome back. In honor of National Mentoring Month, our next guest will speak on the importance of building long-lasting relationships with those in need. On behalf of Tuesday's Children, Bronx native and mentor Brian Harrison, along with Brad Walls, joins me to discuss or speak on the importance of mentorship that changed both of their lives. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I really like to know how each of you actually got involved with this mentorship program. Brian, we'll start with you. Why did you re why did you want to become a mentor? Well, originally, um, I had grown up without a dad myself, and I was doing some uh, volunteer service with uh, a group called Literacy Partners. And one of the people running the uh, operation mentioned to me that she thought I'd be a good fit to be a mentor to a young man, and I uh, did some investigating and came upon Tuesday's children and um, and away we went. And Brad, can you tell us about your story and how you were actually introduced to this program? Yeah, so I um, so I lost a father on 9-11. So I got involved with Tuesday's children as a child. Um, it entailed like a lot of events, um, got super involved with a lot of organizations. Like I would go to events at, you know, you know, Shea Stadium with the Mets or um, Ryan Stadium when I was a kid or do volunteer events or whatever, take your child to work day. I actually went to MTV once. So there was a lot of cool stuff um, and it just provided a community of people who lost people on 9-11. Um, and I got involved with the mentorship program when I was about eight years old, I believe, um, when Brian was introduced to me. My mom wanted me to get involved um, and have a, you know, a male role model in my life. So that's originally how I got involved. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Eight years old, that's like so, so young. Um, yeah. so I'm so excited you're here to kind of talk about that experience. As yeah. you both mentioned, this was through Tuesday's Children. Brian, can you tell us a little bit more about the organization's overall mission to help kids? Well, basically the organization uh, meant, it finds mentors for children, boys and girls, who have been affected by terrorism, acts of terrorism, uh, military conflict, or acts of violence. And, uh, in society, and uh, they're a great nonprofit organization that is truly about um, caring about somebody else. Now, you were both matched to be mentor and mentee. Can you explain what that process was like? I think Brian's probably going to have to speak on that. I was, I was kind of like, so. <laughs> well, the, there was a serious vetting involved um, that was that uh, I had to go through initially. And um, but it was so well worth it in the end. Um, originally, I came down for an interview. Uh, I think I came back again. I supplied some information and then uh, I was called back by the organization uh, about my interest in, in about mentoring Bradley in um, Westchester County. At the time, I'm a Bronx boy, born and bred. Um, at that time, I lived in the, in the Throgs Neck area of the Bronx and uh, and away we went. It was a great match. Now, this has always been debated, uh, and you could both touch on it a little bit, but I'm curious to know uh, what you think on this. Many people believe that young men and boys actually do need strong male figures in their life, and the same for young women and girls. Uh, can you tell us, do you think uh, that is needed to be successful or just to have really good relationships in their future? Um, and Brian, I guess we'll start with you. Well, you know, I totally believe that um, strong figures, uh, adult figures in, in a young person's life are uh, a great asset, especially with the complexities of society today, with the, uh, the drugs and the alcohol, the, um, the bullying, the, the, uh, the peer pressure that goes along. Um, and when you're kind of young and susceptible to things, you fall into places where they aren't usually pretty good. Um, but when you have a mentor, uh, it's usually somebody that you can bounce things off of that you might not bounce off a parent and um, you get a perspective on it. To, and the biggest thing that I think they realize is that they're not alone and that they have somebody they can confide in and be able to get some information. on. And Brad, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, I have, I have a really, really great relationship with my mother, but nonetheless, like more strong adult role models definitely couldn't hurt. Like my aunts and uncles who I'm close with, um, with their own, you know, child or children. Um, so this really provided me with someone, as Brian said, someone I could confide in and, and know that 
he was there for me whenever I needed him. Um, and yeah, I mean, whether to me, whether or not like a role model is male or female or, you know, a child or, or young adult is male or female is irrelevant. But Brian really taught me things again that my mom may not have had a lot of knowledge on or um, another adult role model may not may or may not have had. So I think he provided me with a lot of unique perspectives on things that I really never thought about before that I lacked before knowing him. And he definitely taught me a lot of things that other people didn't. Now, Brad, you said you started this relationship as a kid. You were eight years old, which I think is truly amazing. Um, now that you're a young adult, um, can you just explain the experience you've had and how would you say it's changed your life? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think, again, it gave me a male role model, right, which I had, you know, been lacking most of my life. My mom never remarried uh, after my father had passed and she had dated a little bit. But Brian has always been kind of a consistent figure who, like, again, who I've learned a lot from, um, which has been kind of, in, you know, not kind of, definitely invaluable to have. So I think it was kind of life changing in a sense where, like, as time went on, it wasn't like we were having weekly or monthly outings. Like that being said, it was almost like adding a devoted, you know, you know, like role model who, you know, I could look up to and who I can talk to. And now as I'm more of an adult, it's less of asking like adolescent, you know, life lessons and more kind of catching up and asking for more adult advice and whatnot. But it's been consistent. Again, I started when I was eight and now I'm about to be 24 in a few months. So it's lasted. Now, Brian, although you were the mentor in this relationship, you've expressed that you've also grown and learned from this relationship. Can you explain how? Well, uh, some of the things that Bradley's given to me, which uh, I'm eternally grateful for, you know, he's, it expanded my love and compassion, my patience and understanding. Um, he's a great guy and um, he was a great kid. And as our, uh, as our experience kept going, I just realized how much, how important he was in my life as he said, as, as I've been important in his and, uh, and it's been a great journey. And I, I also understand that he went to your wedding as well. Can you talk about that too? Cause I think that's like really, really cool. And just showed like how a uh, person, it wasn't like a, prof just a professional type of thing, but it was like, this is almost like a part of your family. So can you speak to that? Absolutely part of my family. And his mother, who was just stellar, welcomed my wife when we, she first jumped on board. And my wife was adamant that I keep this relationship going. And uh, Ronnie welcomed her and myself into the family. And the same goes on my side. Um, he was at my wedding. It was a great day. We had a great time. And uh, I now look forward to one day being at his wedding. Oh, that's so amazing. I love that. Now, Brad, seeing you like seeing this positive impact that it had on your life. Now that you are older, do you see yourself becoming a mentor now or even possibly in the future? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely like to. It's something that I don't personally think I'm ready for yet. You know, I just started my career and everything and kind of learning the ropes of young adulthood. Um, so I definitely need to get settled first. But like, truthfully, I've thought about it before. And I definitely plan on getting involved at some point in time. I've slowly gotten more involved with Tuesday's children as time has gone on after kind of losing touch in high school and college. Um, so it's definitely something that I view as extremely important and something that I will definitely look to do when the time is right for me. But I, again, like can't trust the, you know, how meaningful this relationship was for me. Uh, Tuesday's children did give a lot back to me in terms of giving me a community full of people that you know, could only really resonate exactly what I was going through, especially as a kid. Um, so I definitely think it's important to give back, whether that's a mentorship through Tuesday's Children or it's a mentorship through another program. I definitely think it will be important for me one day down the line to make sure that I am making an impact in that way. Now, Brian, I have a question for you. Um, how would you encourage somebody like you said you were encouraged to become a mentor? What's something you would say to another adult who you feel like would be a great fit for this uh, to actually change the life of another young person? Well, I think the biggest thing you have to realize is that um, giving back is a major part of life. It isn't about all take. It's about give. And um, when you get involved in somebody else's life at this level, you realize how truly important it can be to them for them for you to be around and um 
people don't think they can make a difference, they're mistaken. They can definitely make a difference in somebody's life somewhere along, along the line. And Tuesday's Children is a perfect example of that. Um, if you want to reach out, it's TuesdaysChildren.org um, to get more information. I think it's uh, it's been my honor and privilege to, to be involved with these people. They've been nothing but supportive and encouraging the whole way. When I thought I couldn't do something, I could call somebody. They said, oh, no, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll show you the way. So if you don't think you can do this, give it a try. You'd be surprised. It totally... <sighs> Well, I know Brad says I, in, at times I've enriched the quality of his life. I can tell you for sure that he's enriched the quality of mine. Oh, that's so amazing. Thank you both for joining me. We have on the screen where people can stay in touch. Um, but once again, thank you so much for joining me and sharing this beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's all for our show today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kibbenaline, wishing you and your safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.